public. Now I'm ready to go to the order of resolutions. Could you tell me what the point one is? Because in the Public Works Committee, I recommended a point one to put into the budget process in order to lower water rates. Mr. Everybody, President, Mr. President, I still have the floor, yes, Mr. Freeman. I'm, I'm stopping from interrupting. Good, you. thank you. And so I want to know if this is the point one that I'm talking about, because I know the politics of what goes on. My, the people who voted me in and all across the city, they want lower water rates. And in the Public Works Committee, if this is the resolution, we talked about a point one to get the discussion of budgetary lowering of water rates in the um, mechanical way of doing it. The administration wants to use the excess unlawful money, as I call it, to fix pipes and infrastructure. We're going to fix pipes, but I think this duty has a council if this is the point one. Because if it's not, I want to know if it's another point one coming. But the point one I'm looking for is the one that I recommended. And Ms. Poplow is the only one who spoke up and said, I don't know about my other colleagues on the committee, but I'll support it. And so if this is the point one, I don't know who will support it. I'll support it. And I move that it be supported, if it is. And um, if it's not, then we'll let whoever the maker of this point one is support it. But if it's the point one dealing with putting the discussion of lowering water rates in the um, budget discussion, then it's so moved. I'm going to have Councilman Freeman, since he chairs that committee, respond. And then if he doesn't respond, I, I can respond to your, because I was at the Public Works Committee, Mr. Mays. Mr. Freeman? Yeah, um, and I'm going to move 140110.1 for um, adoption. And if I can get support for that, I think that would be an appropriate time to talk about uh, discussion on the, on the motion. Support. So, so it's been moved and supported. Uh, and to speak to what you're saying, um, the point one on this, the original resolution that came to us did not include point number six which is add, capa uh, uh, add capacity in the area of economic development. That was something that you recommended in my committee, and that's something that we added on to that. So that was why it is a point one. There would not be a point one coming from the um, Public Works Committee, because this wasn't before you in the Public Works Committee. If you'd like to add something to this that uh, you feel is important or germane to um, the budget process, then you need to make an amendment, um, and it will become a point two. So if there's something that you want to add to it, then that would be the proper way to do it. But it, there, the reason that there is nothing on here about water is because it was not discussed or voted on in the Finance Committee. Mr. Chairman. And, and Mr. Mays, I don't want to cut you off, but as the chair of the committee, your request was through that chair. I would like for her to respond, and then I will call back on you. And that's fine, Mr. <coughs> President. Um, but before we move to that, based upon the point one, which now has been identified, right. if we still stay with that and then circle back, if I may, I'll leave the water one alone, but I want to talk on to point one. And I can do it under discussion, but I think there's fixing to be an amendment of a point two. So whatever the chair's pleasure is, and you've kind of said it, we'll go that way. And Councilman Mays, that's what I'm trying to get to, to get the amendments all on the resolution and then have it be completed and then allow council members to speak. That's fine. Councilperson Poplar. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for once in our lifetime, Mr. Mays and I walked on the same street. I would like to amend this to a point two because I think um, somewhere down the line we do need to um, try to help the citizens, including myself, with this water bill situation. So if, um, you know, we find ourselves in a surplus somewhere or some money sitting on the curb somewhere, 
we need to try to help the citizens of the city of Flint uh, with their water bills. So I would like that to be um, amended to a point to support. support. We need the correct phraseology in terms of how you would want it amended, Mrs. Popper. Yes, ma'am. I, I, would, I, would, I would suggest that you put down as the amendment that you evaluate ways to reduce water and sewer rates. Is right. that what you're trying to get at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the um, budget plan, just in the, the, the economic uh, development. In the, in the budget plan. Evaluate ways Please. to reduce water and sewer rates in the budget process. Right. For the constituents. Right, for consistency. Is that under uh, Mr. Uh, Freeman, is that number 12? That would be number 12 under the list of priorities from the mayor and the council in, okay. for developing a two-year budget. Thank you. And just so it's been moved, um, and I heard support from Councilman Davis, yes. I believe? Yes. Okay, it's support. been moved and supported. Now I'm going to uh, allow you to finish your discussion, Mr. Mays, and I'm going to move to the rest of the council people. Okay, in our first meeting in November, I put a motion on the floor for 30 million for jobs. The Department of Economic Development, the Department of Economic Development, from talking to Megan Hunter, Megan Hunter, has no staff and no money in it. So we got a Department of Economic Development that's here to serve the citizens just as the police department, but that part, department's primary function is to create jobs through business. And so what this motion did, it put the Economic Development Department as it relates to staff and funding in the upcoming budget. And also in working with Ms. Brown from that same vote of nine to zero in the first meeting when I made that motion, we have a letter that will go to Congressman Kildee asking him to come in these chambers and we are going to ask for 30 million for economic development and jobs. And believe me, we're not just asking in general. I have a specific plan that I want to see come out of there that I can help 20 or 30,000 people get checks. See, it's a way to help people get checks. And so I campaigned on it. I'm serious about it. We have support from nine council people at the beginning of this theory, and it's going to end up being more than a theory. Back in the day, we put together 63 million, I say out of nowhere, through the Department of Economic Development, and they created something called Auto World. We said on the record then, I said it wouldn't work. I would use the money differently. Plants, supermarkets, and other things. So now, just for starters, there's billions of dollars of, out there. I talked to somebody who had a Chinese connection, and I did a three-way call with the state of Michigan for two, one, two, three billion dollars in economic development money. And so believe me, this first letter to kill D and this first move that I made and that the council have now supported is a test. 30 million economic development and jobs and staff in the department that should do that. I believe in order for us to put that in part of our seven point plan, if you don't create jobs and get income tax where people can get checks and pay property tax, I don't believe the emergency managers will ever leave per se. So this is the beginning and I'd like to thank my colleagues for signing the letter. I appreciate the Finance Committee Chair and Mr. Ambrose and others who said, okay, let's this economic development piece be in the um, budget process. And I'd like to thank Ms. Poplar as the Chair of the Public Works for allowing the decrease of water bill discussion to take place. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mays. Councilwoman Poplar, do you have any discussion on this resolution? None other right now, thank you. Okay. Councilman okay. Nolden? Um, yeah, just real quickly. Um, the, um, in the one piece, uh, just like uh, my colleague um, Councilman May said, economic development is, um, is, the, key, is the key. And um, the one thing that I really like about 
this particular uh, piece is with number eight, add capacity in the area of economic development. I think that's what we've been lacking um, in the Department of um, do I, um, Department of Economic Development. I don't think we've had the capacity to be able to do things that we need to do. And I think one thing that we really need is to have an effective um, director and a director that knows all of the nuances that it takes to be able to run that department. And that's something that, you know, moving forward that I'm hoping that we can possibly look at too, you know, um, not that being, a, being an appointed position, looking at having a person that might even be a civil service person so that we'll have some, um, some people that have the structural knowledge of that, of that um, department. Because I know in the past we've had a number of people run that department and we've had problems with it over the last few years. So I'm real happy when they said, you know, in this piece, add the capacity in the, in the field of economic development. But we want to make sure that we have a person that's very experienced and knows all of the ins and outs of how that department should run. And um, I'm very happy um, to support this. And economic development is where it's at. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Freeman, do you have anything? Yeah. Councilman Davis? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to make it real short. Um, I agree with the water rate should be dropped down. I mean, I listen to people every day making complaints. Me, myself, I get a shut off notice every other month. So, you know, the best servant to the people is the one who is served, who's been, you know, going up under the suffering and the harsh conditions himself. I think those, those were the people that God sent to help the people, was those who had suffered dearly, just like everybody else. Um, I think when we do do the data, I'm hoping that it will be done accurately, because if we get water, from my understanding, from Detroit, and we sell it to our neighboring counties, and the rates from the neighboring counties is a lot lesser than ours, who pay every 90 days than what we pay once a month, then I don't see how it can be done adequately or accurately. I don't see how it can be done that way. I do believe, like everybody else said, or like one person said, I do believe Mr. Early is a good guy. I just think he works for a person that I don't like. And I think, and, and I mean seriously, I think it's just pure dictatorship. And I think that when we get out in November, I think we should vote to get this Snyder out of office. I think that's the most important thing that we have to do. I think our democracy has been taken from us. And I just want the public to know that it's a lot of things that you expect us to do, but it's a lot of things we just can't do. I mean, I, 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 I understand your suffering, I understand your frustration, but unfortunately it's just something we just can't do. Mr. Davis, you have one minute. I do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. So I just want to be able to address that need and just let you know that I share your frustration when it comes to this water rates, and I'm going to do everything I can in my humble state to try to bring it down and hope that Mr. Early listened to me and that we can work on this together because you say we work together as a team, and I believe that. And if we can work together, let's do this for the citizens because they are our clients and, we, and our constituents, but our clients because it's a business. And we don't want them to run no more because we're losing good property and income taxes. So, Mr. Early, please, and I say please, I implore you to please work with us with that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Neely, <clears throat> yeah, I'm resolution. A, <clears throat> I'm going to reserve mine until uh, we vote on the resolution because we're just voting now on the amendment. We, we have yeah, the, we're just voting on the just amendment. Voting on the, to amend but you know, I'm giving everybody the opportunity to speak. Yeah, well, I'll just reserve my comment until we get the resolution before us, because currently right now we're just voting on the, the amendment that was made before we actually get a chance to actually vote on the resolution itself. So I'll reserve until we get to the resolution. Okay. Councilperson Galloway? Councilperson Van Buren? No. Okay, the motion has been moved and supported. We're, vo we're voting to amend. Restate the motion. Could you to read? amend. This, this is to amend. This is on the amendment. Right. This is on the point two. Right. This is on the point two? Um, yeah. Resolution 140110.1 has been moved and supported to amend to a point two to add um, <laughs> the, the um, in the budget process that we evaluate the water and sewer rates. I don't have it 
verbatim, but you wrote it down. Right. And that's on the point two. So roll, Madam Clerk. Ms. Poplo? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes to amend. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Duren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is nine yes, zero no to amend. Now, now would be a time to um, move to either approve or deny. Move, move, move. Point two, okay? Discussion. Councilman Neely. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> it's my belief that water rates are too high, and I believe in some cases they're inaccurate as the, the residents in the city of Flint are charged. Uh, my belief is that the last two water rate increases should be repealed once we switch over to the primary source of water from the Flint River. Uh, as we wait on the water rate study, Mr. Early, I'm, I'm anxious to see what that study uh, I'm ready to see what the study st says as it relates to what the water rate should be inside the city of Flint. I'm also curious to what study we had before to increase the water rates inside the city of Flint um, by more than 100 percent or so. So my recommendation to you is that we should actually repeal the two last water rate increases to the residents until once we switch over to the Flint River water as our primary source of water, drinking water, the water rate increases are predicated based upon the water rate increases from the city of Detroit. If we no longer are drinking for water from the city of Detroit, are those water rates still accurate for our residents inside the city of Flint? So that is going to be my recommendation. I do, uh, I am going to vote yes on this uh, amendment because I think we do need to evaluate it and I am anxiously waiting on that water rate study because the two previous emergency manners, excuse me, emergency managers said there would be a forensic audit on our water and sewer fund. Mike mm -hmm. Brown said it would be, he reneged on it. Ed Kurtz said it would be, he reneged on it. So I'm anxious to see what's really happening in our water and sewer fund as it relates to how we charge our residents in the city of Mr. President. Let me finish over here, Mr. Mays. Councilperson Galloway? No. Councilperson Van Barron? No. Mr. Real quick, I do agree with what Mr. Neely said, but to my colleagues who wasn't in public works, when we were in finance committee meeting, Mr. Ambrose in the budget process was made clear that anything that the council had an interest in that they wanted in the budget process, that it should be put in this document that we're moving forward that's coming out of finance committee. It's a procedure thing. So we talked about economic development and we talked about decreasing water rates. And it would not be too late if it's something of great interest that you want it put into the document for discussion. So that's all we're doing. We're putting the decrease of water rates into the budget discussion document. So that means when we get into the budget process, because the mayor will now see that, and him and his staff will now try to see what they can come up with. And then it'll come to us, and since we've got it in there, we'll see if the mayor did anything, but then we would have an opportunity by giving them notice. That's something that concerns us. Whether um, Mr. Early or anybody else do anything prior to that, this is a budget process procedure, and I know if I wasn't in that meeting, then I would want somebody to hit me to what was happening. So that's what's happening, and so now we're moving forward. And I don't know if this will be the last time to get something in, but we did a point one and a point two economic development and um, water rates. So now we got a chance of dialogue and talking about the mechanics of it later. Thank you, Mr. President. Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolden? Yes, for Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes, for approval. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Popla? Yes. Hallelujah. The vote is nine yes, zero no on the point two. Okay, that brings us to the next resolution, 140112. Oh, 
been moved and supported to approve resolution 140112. Discussion? Mr. Mays? Question um, through you to the finance chairman. Once we approve this, if I'm right or wrong, you correct me. It doesn't shut the door to everything. We still should be able to, if need be, just need be, get something in later. What do you think? go through a budget process where um, all of these different departments are going to come before us with the recommendations and at that point we'll be able to make amendments or um, yeah make amendments uh, through that process and I, I asked specifically of Mr. Early um, you know if he was going to veto this or you know ultimately in the end that you know he has the say over this why doesn't he just um, tell us what is off the off the table now and he said that this wasn't his process that this was going to be ours and the mayor's process um, to, to craft this budget within um, within the revenues that that they're projecting so um, yeah everything is on the table the, the idea of those 12 points is that um, you know that's what we're giving them as our priorities as they initially develop that budget so as it comes to us, I would, I would expect, fully expect that there's probably going to be some tweaking or changes or um, amendments as we move through. And Mr. President, Councilman Mays. and if I may, I was in that meeting and I heard <coughs> Mr. Early say this is going to be our baby. The council and the mayor will develop this budget. And so we even talked about meetings in the future that the council will have to sit and really do the detailed budget. And so... I didn't do that with Mr. Freeman just for my benefit. I did it for those colleagues who were in the room who didn't hear that as Mr. Early sits here again. I'm sure that the mayor and Mr. Early and them and the staff is kind of the same. So I'm sure that Mr. Early will watch and do, but he did say that. This is going to be the mayor and the council's budget. And the normal process is that the mayor proposes it and the council can amend it and then we can see how it ends up. So I say to my colleagues, take this budget process to the new ones. Take it very seriously because what we do here is going to affect the next fiscal year of the residents in this city. Thank you. We're on resolution 140. One one two. Yep. Councilman Neely. Yeah, I'll keep this very quick. It's getting late, and my sugar's getting low, and I want to get home. I'm not going to be supporting this. I'm not going to vote to support this. Um, as I stated, we did get the information Thursday of this week. I have not had a full opportunity or any opportunity uh, to really discuss the seven-point plan. I do agree that we need a plan moving forward in the city of Flint. Absolutely, we do. Uh, there are certain portions of this plan I just cannot. Uh, wrap my mind around the concept of, of especially point number three specifically I'll be very specific about what I have trouble with and I will not be supporting this vote tonight I'm sure it has enough support to go through uh, I will move forward uh, I will acquiesce to the will of this body but I do believe that we need to have more discussion as it relates to the seven point plan and I'm not comfortable voting to support it okay. thank you <coughs> I'll say something real quick um, I learned in life to be an in, uh, independent thinker, and I'm not a, uh, going with Mr. Nilly say, I'm going on with what I think. I think if I'm listening to the public and the public don't want me to approve this, I won't approve this. And I think that's what I have to pay attention to because you guys are the ones that put us in office. So I'm making my opinion based on what you guys want. Not from what nobody else wants, but what you want. And only because I want us to be able to carefully look over this in a thorough manner. And I do believe we must have a plan. I believe that. Moving without a plan is just moving aimlessly. We have to have a purpose and an aim. And the aim is always predicated upon a plan. So I'm not denying the content of the plan. I just want to be able to thoroughly read it, and I also want to make sure that the people that place me in office gets what they want, because you are the ones who I want to stand up for. So that's the only reason why I'm not supporting it today. The only reason. And I, and I just wanted to, um, I wanted to mention that 
I too was able to sit down with um, the emergency manager before we got the plan in place. Um, I've heard um, my constituents and well the ones that are represented because of course all of them are not here. Um, tonight I will I'll, I don't want to support it and I'll tell you why. I believe that as a body of nine although it does take only five which the five has already shown themselves to be present. I think that as a team when we're working together and because we're not in a dire strait to make such a decision right now, if there's one of my colleagues for whatever reason, be it neglect, be it they were too busy, but they don't have the necessary in what they deem to be information to make a well-informed decision, I think that this is an opportunity, and I am one that is able to make decisions on my own, but because of what this does and because it takes the work of all of the team, not that we can't bring each other up to speed, but I support any of my colleagues that feel like they need a little bit more time and, and feeling as though a postponement would have given them what they need. And so for that reason, um, that would be my stand on tonight. I just wanted everybody to understand that I don't do anything aimlessly. There's a reason for the decision that I make. But I do support the, I do think that we need a plan and, and, and the plan, you know, in the way that it sits, I just want to, to have my colleagues all comfortable in myself. That's just me tonight. Thank you. I guess, I guess before I move on, I, I'm, I'm hearing that we all think it's important to have a plan. Correct. We all, we all think we need a plan. Correct. Plans are plans that can be looked at and be amended and, and changed over the course of a period of time. But I guess what I'm hearing, Mr. Early, who's ever fault, whether it's our office's fault or whatever, what I'm kind of hearing is council members want to adopt this plan, but yet they still want to be able to sit down and be able to go through this and make a more informed decision before they have to vote on it tonight. And I guess my question would be to you, trying to bring cohesiveness to the body and, and you know, I, I don't want a plan like this to be split because somebody didn't get the information. If you would be amenable to allowing us to have a special council meeting in seven to ten days that would give council members the opportunity to review this, and then if they don't want to um, support it or vote on it or whatever, you know, I, I just think that what I'm hearing and I think you're hearing the same thing, is that some council members, even though you've extended the offer, they didn't get the detail. And the old saying is, the devil's in the detail, and I think they just want to have some time to be able to sit down, look at this, and then contact your office or the appropriate department head and, and work through this. So I don't, I, I've been here a long time, and I'm kind of reading the council, and I'm not reading uh, a, a you know, a real majority of the vote for this. And I would rather us adopt a plan uh, in a few more days that would not have the reason not to support it because it didn't have the detailed information. So I know I'm rambling, but I think it's important that we try to get as much support for this plan to demonstrate to the treasurer's office that we are working together and we, and we are looking at this as a, a, a viable means for transition. Oh, I, well, I, I offer that as a question to you. Okay, so you're asking for me to respond to, is this a request for more time? I yes. am. Yes. I am. There's no motion on, well, there is a motion on the floor to support this, and I'm out of order. I know that. Um, but I'm asking you before we take this vote, because I'm hearing some real concern from my colleagues, and you know as I know this plan is very important for us to be able to move forward. And I'm, I'm asking you for more time. You're asking me for more time? Mm -hmm. Well, let me just say that it's important to me that the city council be a part of this process. 
It's important to me that the mayor be a part of this process. It's important to me that the community